Oh. Here, Rev, you want to help me get this back yeah. over? Hold on, let me loosen it up. There we go. How's that? Does that look good, Rev? Okay, can I pull I it up? I want to clean it. Hold on, thing. let me let me tighten it up. I first need Papa to move it out of the way. Pull it up. Yep. Okay. Hey, River, is it filling? No, no, right. Hey, River, how about this? Oh yeah. <laughs> he loves that. Oh, look at him. Yeah. Think the water's working now? Yeah. Good job, man. Give me a, give me a high five. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm Connor Crickmore, and I moved from the city to the country to become a farmer and to explore that connection between my food and the natural world. I am passionate about growing. I not only grow for the community, but also for my family. When it's time for us to eat, I gather the ingredients from our family garden and around the farm. I then cook it at our barn. Follow along through that entire journey as I plant seeds in my garden and care for the plants as they grow. Come with me on the final harvest and through the preparation of the family meal. Learn to grow and cook with simple methods with the food you grew yourself. This is Seed to Plate at Neversink Farm. Each episode, we follow one vegetable from seed to harvest to plate. And this time, it is the good for you, great tasting kale. Kale is a great crop for the family garden since you plant it once and it keeps on giving until the snow falls. With the early young kale, I will make a delicious salad. And while the kale matures, me and the kids will make really colorful all natural beeswax candles using whatever the kids can find around the farm. Then we will solve a problem in the garden with cabbage moss. When the kale is ready to harvest, I'm going to gather the rest of the ingredients for a wonderful meal. Then I'm going to cook down at the barn. Let's get to growing. All right, so I'm going to see kale, a uh, few different types. I like to get it nice and big, so I'm using uh, big pots. It's really hard to screw it up. It's going to germinate readily and certainly one of the easier, easier crops. And that's true for curly kale, for Tuscan kale, purple kale. It's all pretty much the same. And the nice thing about kale is you can grow it as a baby, you can grow it big, you can grow it medium size. And this is going to be all for a big leaf kale that's going to be around for the whole season. If I was going to grow baby kale, then I would grow uh, either with a cedar or just grow it really, really tightly in two rows. And, uh, sprinkle the seed in, but for the big stuff, we're going to start it in a big pot, put in a nice big transplant uh, that's ready to go uh, for nice early kale in the season. All right, so it's about four or five weeks since we put the seed in the pot and we've grown a beautiful start for the garden. So in the meantime, I actually, I started some, a different type of kale. All right, so this we started together and then I threw in some Tuscan kale. So this is curly kale and this is uh, Tuscan. Just figured it'd be nice to have, to try both of them and we can, uh, We'll definitely try to cook with both of them. And so I'm going to put them at uh, 15 inch spacing down this bed. Hey, Riv, you know the uh, two by two grid? Yeah. Want to grab that? Oh, turn it in. Huh? It's not 
That's okay, because we're just going to use the line anyway for in the center of the bed. Yeah, you want to dig the next one for me? You just dig it right under the pot. How the plant gets into the ground and getting the spacing perfect is unimportant. What is important here when planting is these moments together with my kids. Am I going too fast for you? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm able to keep up, man. You're all right. Are you trying to say that I'm going too slow? Yeah. Just enjoying my time with you, buddy. All right, last one. Can do it? Yeah, you can do it. You know how to do it. All right, so we'll give them a few weeks, we'll come back, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fertilize them then. Because right now they don't need it, but in a few weeks they definitely will. Cool? We will let the kale get comfortable in the garden and start to grow while I get back to some much needed spring farm work. The peas are reaching for the sky and need a bit of taming. The weather may still be cold, but the sun is out and certainly the first sign of spring in the outside fields at the farm are the delightful snap peas, a rare seasonal treat that you can't get at your big grocery chains. This is what small scale farming looks like. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since we planted these kale seedlings and they've grown incredibly fast. And that's because they really like the cold weather and it's been a really, really cold spring. But they don't mind at all. They're not as tall as they're gonna be. We're gonna hope that they're gonna get probably up to about here and then we can use them for cooking. But when they're small, we can still use the small leaves for salads because they're really tender. So I got my baby kale leaves that are going to be sweet and tender. Uh, they're tender because they're young and they're sweet because it's been really cold and that condenses the sugars in them. They're going to be perfect for a, uh, a noontime salad. The 
So we uh, did a check-in on the kale and got uh, some beautiful baby leaves from just under the young plants. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a nice afternoon salad. It's kind of a take on a uh, Caesar salad, but with kale. You're gonna have the, the baby kale. It's gonna have like a Caesar dressing with uh, some croutons. De-stem and then chop the kale. Young kale like this is very tender, so you need not get finicky about stems. I'm going to get started on the croutons, which is just a great bread cubed and sauteed in olive oil. finally chop some spring garlic and then into the blender with mayonnaise and English mustard. A drizzle of white wine vinegar and Worcestershire sauce. Next, it's just a bit of anchovy paste with pepper and salt. The next ingredient pulls all those flavors together and makes it a Caesar salad for me. The grated Parmesan. Finally, the green young garlic for some punch. Give it all a blitz with some olive oil and it's done. Dress the kale, plate, and add croutons. Oh, and of course, some more Parmesan. Baby kale Caesar salad with uh, toasted croutons. Fantastic. This afternoon, I thought a fun activity to do with the kids would be to make some candles, some beeswax candles. And what's, what's great about it is you can just add things from around your garden. So I was gonna grab some lavender and some rosemary, but then you're in for a real treat because we're gonna go down and we're gonna see my wife's Kate's flower garden. And we're gonna go grab some flowers from in there for the candles. And it should be a lot of fun. Hey guys. Hey. Candle making. Let uh, know that. <laughs> you know that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put flowers in the candles. So you guys gotta pick your favorite flowers. So you guys go in the garden and find whatever flowers you want. While the kids are looking for flowers, I'm gonna start a fire uh, to melt the wax. It's hot out, it's summer. Wax will probably melt by itself, but I'm gonna start a fire so we can get that going and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun.
the dreaded cabbage moth, right? You see those things flying around your garden and what they're doing is they're looking for a nice place to land where they can lay their eggs on a cabbage family vegetable. So you're gonna be your broccoli or your kale or your cabbage and it's gonna lay little eggs, turn into caterpillars and those caterpillars are gonna eat your plants. And this is what it looks like. You can see where they just devoured the leaf here, right over here, All right? We have it here. It just can do incredible damage if you have a, a lot of them. The best thing to do is just to pick them off. It's very hard to stop the, the moth because you can cover everything, but that's gonna be ugly and it's going to be just a difficult thing to keep around in your garden because of wind and the rest of it. So the best thing to do is just have really good soil so the plant can defend itself. In my farm, I find the better the soil, the less the cabbage moth. And then you can just pick them off. They're very easy, right? There's one right here. I just take it off and put it on the ground and step on it. And that's the end of that. And so when you start to see those places where there's uh, damage, you can go and just look for the caterpillar and take it off. It's a lot better than using some spray. There are sprays out there, but in your garden, this is just the best way to do it. And it's not such a big deal unless they just go crazy. So once you start seeing those cabbage moths and you see that hole in your leaf, just go and pick them off and everything should be fine. It's harvest day for the kale and I'm really excited. I got an awesome dinner planned for the family. It's been a long time. It's been 12 weeks since we put a seed in that pot. And then four weeks later, we transplanted it in the garden. And now we have this incredible bounty of kale, more than I could ever possibly eat. Had a little problem along the way with some cabbage moths and caterpillars, but we were able to get those off the plants. They were healthy. And now I'm gonna be harvesting them for a meal and I plan a BLT salad with a bacon, lettuce, tomato, but the lettuce is going to be replaced with the kale. And I also have a risotto I have planned and it's going to be great. I'm going to need a few things from the farm, onion, chives, parsley, the wonderful cherry tomatoes we have right now, and of course the kale. We're going to grab all of that, we're going to head down to the barn and we're going to cook it up. As a farmer, I get all this fresh food to cook with. It's one of the reasons I left the city to start a farm. But you can grow food as well in your yard, or if you don't have a yard, then in a pot indoors. Even a single plant will add to the enjoyment of cooking and eating meals when it includes the food you grew yourself. I'm gonna cook two kale dishes. One is a BLT, which is a BLT salad, which I'm just replacing the lettuce with uh, kale. Then I'm gonna make a risotto, a kale pesto risotto. They're both gonna be amazing. So I'm gonna get started with the pesto first, because that's gonna take a little bit of time. I get the stock onto the grill, and you can use chicken stock or vegetable stock. It doesn't really matter. I leave that to simmer and chop the chives, parsley, kale for the pesto. Then chop some onions to cook with the rice.
Walnuts are best in pesto when slightly warmed first. The rice is first cooked in oil with the onions just before I start adding stock. A little bubbly never hurts, but it is not necessary. Then blitz the walnuts and the rest of the chopped veg with garlic. Add a little stock and blend until smooth. Risotto is a slow process that shouldn't be rushed. Your patience will be well rewarded. Finish the pesto with olive oil and Parmesan cheese. Then add the whole thing to the risotto. All right, I got the risotto sorted. Now I'm gonna move on to the uh, BLT salad. This is a side of bacon uh, smoked from the farm and I'm going to crisp it up on the grill. Add kale, tomatoes, and a wonderful dressing made with creme fraiche, lemon. Really, really simple, but I know the kids are gonna absolutely love it. This salad can be made any way you like. If you don't want bacon, that is okay. If you like a different dressing, that is fantastic. Cooking should be fun and never let anyone tell you where you are wrong and what you like. When you put passion into what you do, it will always be worthwhile. Enjoy this time, experiment, try different things, and make today a wonderful day and share it all with the people you care for.
You want extra bacon? Uh, you want some of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give everyone a little extra cheese if you want it. Okay, there were still a few snow flurries on the ground when we seeded that kale. And it was just early spring when we planted it into the garden. And now it's middle of summer, everything's blooming. We're having a beautiful dinner outside. We had a few problems with the cabbage moths along the way, but we were able to overcome it and still create this beautiful meal, just growing your own, being able to cook it yourself. Cheers. While we finish up our meal, why don't you head over to neversinkfarm.com for more information on growing your own vegetables. Some say